2015, the Warriors have been hearing about how lucky they were, about what would have happened if the Cavs wouldn't have been decimated by injury. Since last year, the Cavs have been hearing about what would have happened if Draymond hadn't got suspended, how the Warriors gave them a championship. But now they're both back to run this thing back. First time in NBA Finals history that the same two teams meet for three consecutive seasons. Oh, and let's just bring Kevin Durant to the party just cuz. <laughs> what is good? Welcome to the best 60 minutes of your day. Coming to you from Oracle, sure to be Oracle tonight. We've been waiting 347 days since Father's Day last year. Nice math. Seven days for basketball, period. Yes. Since the Cavs finished working over the Celtics, and it is finally here. Well, almost. They're warming up. It's almost here, a couple of hours until game one. You ready? I'm Finally. Ready. Finally. Enough I'm just talk. Like, let's tip this let's, thing let's off. Let's get this going right let's now. Let's stay in the moment. Let's talk <laughs> about game one in particular. LeBron James, for whatever it's worth, has historically not had a whole lot of success in game one of NBA Finals. Just one in six overall, losing five straight. And in fact, home teams have won 11 of the last 12 game ones in the NBA Finals including the Warriors each of the last two years. So many numbers. Yeah, numbers that really don't matter much once the game tips off. Right. Uh, in fact, the Cavs, keep in mind that they have, they won games five and seven here last year, okay? And have won nine in a row overall on the road in the postseason. So just staying with game one, because I kind of feel like this series, normally we know the last two years, given yeah. that both teams led 2-1 Cleveland 2015, 3-1 uh, Golden State last year. It feels like this series won't really start until game three in Cleveland. Right. So let's just talk about game one, Jamel. Who or what are you most looking forward to tonight? What are you looking for? I realize I'm on a bit of an island here, but to me, no, pre no player in this finals has more pressure on them than Steph Curry to produce. And I know that sounds crazy. Even though Steph has a ring, two MVPs, his stature as a top-tier player has been somewhat in question after Kyrie cooked him last year in the finals but look don't take my word for it listen to, listen to Steph right here the year before was you know kind of in the same boat I have great memories of that and terrible memories of last year but they're both lessons that you can learn going into this series um, knowing what it takes to win how important every possession is but yeah I don't want to feel like what I felt last year I'm going to do everything in my power to, you know, attack every game with that kind of perspective. But we obviously have been through um, a championship, you know, success story where we know what it takes to win. So got to feel both of those um, experiences as best we can to uh, put us in the best you know, position to win this series. See, that's how you know it's deep. Steph has gone full beard. He's gone hockey player in the playoffs, all right? That's how you know that, there's, that he even understands, maybe not pressure, because players never like to cop to feeling pressure necessarily, but when you look at how we have gone from putting Steph here to where he's gone since, of course people still recognize that he's great, but it's almost because he hasn't performed well against this team in particular. That on this stage. On this stage that people are looking at him somewhat skeptically. So I think there's a lot of pressure on him to produce. Well, you're not on an island in that regard. Everybody agrees that there's pressure for the, at least for now, two-time defending MVP until a new one is crowned this year and the first ever unanimous MVP to perform, relatively speaking, better than he has, more to his standard. Now, in fairness, he could have been 2015 uh, finals MVP. Iguodala, the whole LeBron stopper, quote-unquote, right. narrative got him that MVP, but Steph turned it around after those early struggles in that series. So I agree with you that there is pressure on Steph. But you started off by saying he's under the most pressure to produce in his finals. You know there was a dude that left the team that was leading 3-1 in the Western I'm Conference familiar. Finals? I'm familiar. That went to the team that won 73 games on the 4th of July and has been called a cupcake and a coward and a cop-out and, and not a competitor who came to the Golden State Warriors for this very reason. To me, the dominant storyline in this finals is Kevin Durant, by far. It's Kevin Durant and everybody else. That includes the LeBron chasing Michael Jordan conversation because LeBron's at the table. Whether he's at the head of the table or not, that'll be decided maybe this, this finals or another. Who knows? But LeBron's already, his legacy is already very impressive and without question one of the greatest players of all time. Kevin Durant right now has an opportunity tonight, starting tonight, to come out and announce his presence with authority on the greatest stage in this sport. LeBron, there was video of him warming up the other day singing, NBA Finals, did you miss me? Did you miss me? You know who we missed? The second best player in the NBA for five years. Five years ago, quiet as this kept, averaged 30 points on 55% shooting in 2012 when he was not the player he is now. 
Now, years later, after disappointment and injury, here he is back without the ring. Steph's got a ring. I Draymond's know. got the ring. LeBron's got a couple of them. Kyrie's got the ring. Nobody has more on the line than Kevin Durant. And if he can come out in this series, Jamel, and let's say he's finals MVP. I keep saying people tend to hate a little less hard in hindsight. If he were to go in and win finals MVP and be the best player in this series with this much star power, I think that would change the conversation about him, no matter how he got to Golden State. Say what you want about how he got to Golden State and his decision and whether or not the old guys would have done that. He's here now. And you can't, this can't be a lose-lose, a no-win situation for Golden State. A lot of people look at it that way, Jamal. It feels that way to me. That if they win, it's just expectations. Correct. But if they lose, then they underachieve. And, and it's but the they, but it's, if it's a clash of the Titans, it's a clash of the Titans. And if he's the number one player on this court with these players, that's got to count for I something. I think it will have to take that, and that's hard to do in a series with this much star power. I just feel like that the people who have, who have decided that KD was weak for coming to Golden State – I don't Nothing's know. What, I don't think you can you can get them off of that because they're still going to look at oh well yeah you won Finals MVP because you had Steph next to you and had Clay and you had Draymond and you had the, I, but they I, said that about LeBron you had Kyrie Bailey y'all you had Ray Allen people, people, people always, always look for always a reason to hate but I just think that for him it's going to be harder for him to change that narrative. All right, I mentioned the star power. So you got seven 2017 All Stars, seven of the last eight MVPs. Come to think of it, if not for the Cavs blowing. That 21-point lead in Game 3 against the Celtics, we could be looking at two undefeated teams. Instead, we got to settle for 24-1. I mean, what more can you ask for? All we know is, though, these two teams, after Game 7 last year, got one heck of a tough act to follow. I've conditioned my mind, sacrificed my soul, just to get to this moment. Let's go! Greatness is earned, never rewarded. My body achieves what my mind believes. If I fall seven times, I'll get up eight. My fear of failure is my motivation to succeed. I will do something today that will make me be remembered forever. Follow my lead. Follow my lead from the start to the finish. I mentioned all... I mentioned all the star power in this year finals. Good to have some all star power here on the <laughs> six. Appropriately enough, six time appropriately enough, six time NBA All Star, three time All NBA selection, Jermaine O'Neal. Good to have you, former Warrior. Right. Before Steph became Steph, <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were here in Golden State. So we were talking about between two Warriors. Which Warrior has the more pressure going into these finals? Is it Steph or is it Kevin Durant? I would have to say it's Kevin Durant. In many ways, like you know, like you guys said earlier, they were up 3-1 last year, didn't produce, coming to a team that won 73 games, already has a ring. So it has to be Kevin Durant because mm. if, they, if they don't win it this year, then it's going to go back to him and say, hey, did we really need it? Mm. Do you think that he has to win a ring to validate this decision? See, I, I never thought that he did because I think he, he truly came – for more than just a ring. He came for a better, generally speaking, basketball situation for a him. A personal situation. And a personal all situation. So court, you think right. he has to win a ring in order for this to, you know, to make all the hate and everything that he's experienced over the last year, to make that even even worth it? I think the media thinks so. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he made, a, he made a business decision. Uh, he made a personal decision. Uh, I think as an athlete, that's one thing that gets lost in the transition when uh, you know, we talk about free agency and we talk about people making decisions. You know, one thing, listen to all of his conversations when he, after he made his decision, he talked a lot about, it seemed like more internal issues that he had with his team. And, you know, for him to leave a team uh, that was built like OKC was built to come to another one, that was a huge statement, you know, maker, you know, towards uh, the general public and also towards the Oklahoma City uh, Thunder as well. You know what's encouraging if you are a Warriors fan or a Kevin Durant fan or just if you're Kevin Durant, he doesn't seem to buy into a lot of the conversations about the pressure that's on him to produce. He seems at peace, which whether or not he's just saying that because it sounds good to say, I take him at his word for it, but he seems like he's coming into this finals not feeling like, oh, okay, I got to come out and prove something or I got to win this thing. He seems at a, a really good mental place, mm -hmm. even though it's been five years, a lot of disappointment, and now he's finally back. He came to compete for championships. Even said today he'd be willing to take less than the max, which is about $4 million. So, <laughs> you know, the money he, he loses in his college. He's struggling by yeah. any But, but you, know, you know, he's already looking long-term about this being not just a temporary, you know, hired gun type thing, but wanting to keep the core together, Iguodala, 
and Sean Livingston. So I guess how much do you think that's going to help him going into this, not feeling like the weight of the world is on his shoulder, no matter how much the world wants to put that weight on him? Well, as a player, you try to find a way to take that pressure off of you. You just do. Uh, I think no matter what he, what, it, what he says, it will be, it, the pressure will fall back on him. Um, this team has won it before, and you can't step away from that. Yeah. He has to be a, a big part of this component in this series to make sure that he puts such a stamp on it that it quiets all the critics. Because no matter what players say, we hear it. Right. Mm -hmm. We hear it. We can say it doesn't matter. It does matter. You and know that's what, what happened with Steph. Right. Okay, like, to as great as he is. Yeah, I mean, people... You, People question him. As it was, I've always said the one, the one thing that hurts Steph a lot is the narrative. He was the guy that people didn't see coming. And I draw a parallel between him and, say, Isaiah Thomas, how he broke up. The, he was the player that won a couple in crashed between. The party. He crashed right. the party, yeah. right? And so his, his players that he played with then that still hold a grudge against him because <laughs> of that. Steph Curry is the guy that crashed the party. And because people were a little more hesitant to buy into his success, right. I think he's got a lot to prove as well. Do you, you feel like he has something to prove in this final? Even though he's got one and he's got the MVPs, but just based off how he played in the finals last year, people forget in game one last year, he had 11 points. The leading scorer was Sean Livingston. Right. Okay? Right. So to me, he has a lot to prove as well. So let me ask you guys a question. Have you ever seen an NBA finals with, with this many storylines? No. I, it, it's everybody has going into it, it seems like. Yeah. 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 Join the club. I've never Draymond. Seen it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Mike Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Join the club. The, yeah. yeah, the fact that Steve Kerr, uh, he made But you got to prove, Jail. You got, <laughs> you got, you got a few <laughs> minutes <laughs> left in you. <laughs> <laughs> I probably could. Yeah. Yeah, but, 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 well, the people have talked about that as well. That, is this the greatest right. NBA finals that we could, could potentially ever see? Well, and when you think about LeBron James, already one of the greatest of all time, if he were to win this, you have a lot of people who will be ready to <laughs> elevate him even higher. And, and, and I keep saying, if you want to put LeBron as the greatest of all time, just do it now. Don't do it once his team, if they were to I be Golden you keep State. I underlining that, once his team. Because I'm not a range person, J.O. I'm, I'm not a range guy. I'm not a range guy. This, so, this is a team sport, but an individual one at the okay, same so time. Okay, so at number two, if Kyrie, if Kyrie is the, is the finals MVP, and, or Kevin Love balls out of LeBron, I mean, LeBron is going to be LeBron. But let's say LeBron wins it. But Kyrie, I don't know, makes a game-winning Game 7 shot. Just, I don't know, just spitballing here. <laughs> Are you going to then say, well, LeBron is not as great because he needed help. Every great player needed help, is my point. So if he loses his finals, it doesn't make him less of a great player. Right. You know, If you want to say he's the greatest of all time, just do it now. Have conviction about it. Not you. I mean, you. you know. I don't know if I'm ready to say that. I think he's getting close. Mm -hmm. You okay. know, it's something to say about what's on, making. What's holding you back? What's holding you back? I mean, MJ is, I think MJ is. He's in a special place in everybody's heart. Mm -hmm. And he's in a place where I don't know if he can be touched. Right. Anytime you make seven straight NBA finals, that has to say something. He's got his own legacy. And he, and he is a, a, a dominant piece for the reasons for them teams to make seven straight finals. So I think LeBron is, is on the cuffs of being, you know, right next to Michael. Right. I don't know if anybody ever eclipsed Michael. But that's because we won't let them. We won't. We won't let. We won't bring Michael Jordan off the wall. Right. Like off the, he's going to forever right. be the poster in everybody's mind. Like for so long. You don't have to minimize it. No. You know, you know it's not I'm about not nostalgia. No, you make it about it, nostalgia. Because it it's is. Not about, it, it's, 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 it's not is about, totally about my Jordans. About it's nostalgia. not about my shoes. <laughs> no, it ain't about the it shoes. It is completely about all of that. Like for for all of our lifetimes, the dominant story or narrative has been Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player ever. Period. Don't at me. Don't debate me. Don't fight me. Right. Dale, it feels it's like hard it feels like more and more people are warming up to the idea of. LeBron being right there, I just simply say maybe he's just his own thing. Yeah. Maybe and maybe people say he's more magic. We get it, his style of play. Forget magic. Forget Kareem. It's like there's this table right. bigger than this one. And Russell's over here with his 11 championships. And Kareem's over here with his all-time leading scorer and his six MVPs. And here's LeBron taking two teams to four finals each and seven straight, who's going who to go down as one of the top scorers and assist men of all time. And here's Jordan. Jordan might be at the head of the table. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean LeBron can't eat. That right. mean LeBron is not getting his fair share of it. So I, I just he, feel like whatever he does in this in this series should not right. elevate him or lower him just based off it's of gotta beating this team. Like if, if by all metrics that they're considering the Warriors the greatest NBA finalist ever, right? And you beat the greatest NBA finalist ever. They the play one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> See, here you go. I'm, a I'm asking. No, that's not, you know how this works. And then I'll just go, I'll go hypothetical on you. Jordan couldn't have done it? Just I like, don't, I just, don't know. Exactly. That's the point. It's like don't we don't know, know what LeBron could have done in Jordan's A-Day with the rules, differences, and right. this, that, and the other. Could Jordan have beaten with this team? Who knows? He didn't. Each of them have right. their own pass. Speaking of one-on-one -on -one or not quite, three-on-three. 
You're in a three-on-three three league, man. The tri- what, what's, your name, what's your name of your team? The Tri-State? Tri-State. Yeah. It's, it's the, you're the <laughs> yeah. captain, too, right? I'm the captain. I'm the captain. So uh, play, how player much are you coach? looking forward captain. to this? Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a transition. You know, a lot of the guys haven't played in a while. <laughs> you know, so, you know, we got to make sure. But I, I think everybody's, you know, from what I've seen and, and all the guys that we talked to, everybody's back home working out. Um, it is half court. So, you know, we, we, you know, so we, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to up and down. Shots, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, like it, it should be intense. You can't foul out. You can't foul out. Really? You foul out. Oh, this would be a playoff foul. Oh, my God. A lot of this can be a rated R scenario <laughs> in many ways. But uh, we're excited. I think Cube is, is a genius for what, you know, what he's putting together. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about being a part of it. We'll see what happens. A lot of hype around it, which we should live up to before we let you go. Well, let's live up to the hype. Who you got this series? Ooh, um, I'm gonna be a little bit different. I don't. I don't know if they I want two options. Let's be different. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. If, if, I don't know if I want to. My personal belief, I think the Cavs win tonight. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know who wins the series. I ultimately believe this series is gonna come down. You lot, don't it's, know. A, it's a lot of star power, right? Okay. Yeah. I believe this series is gonna come down to the bench. Okay. All because right. at some point, somebody on that bench is gonna have to produce at a high level and be the difference maker. So. Uh, you must be friends with too many people on both listen, of these teams. <laughs> this, this is my ex home for one year, yeah. so I got a lot of relationships here. But I, it's that type of series where you, it's okay. hard to pick. You it might be the best. It might be the it. most impactful. Thompson. One of them does the dirty work, and the other one, his shots been a little off these playoffs. <laughs> as in Clay, but that's, we know he can defend that's gonna, too. That's not going to stay too long. Okay. All right. All right. Well, hey man, we love for you to stick around, but we got to you know kind of right, get yeah, the no. rotation going. <laughs> All right, now 538 has all-time ratings of NBA teams that they update daily. A lot of different variables go into it, but here's why it matters now. According to their ratings, the Warriors are the best team ever entering the NBA Finals just ahead of the 72-win Bulls team from 1996. For LeBron James, it's yet another historically great Finals opponent as he has now faced three of the top six NBA, or three of the top six finalists in NBA history. And yesterday, he sat down with our own Rachel Nichols. All right, so let's talk about those seven straight, those rewards. What have you learned about yourself along the way? Um, I'm just trying to stay even keel, you know. Have and, you gotten better uh, at that? Yeah, I have. I have. I mean, it's seven, seven straight for me. So that means it started at 25, and uh, and I know that I've grown tremendously in seven years. You know, not only from a basketball player, but from a, but from a man in general. You know, from you know a role model to a husband now to a to a father. You know, so. I've grown in so many facets over these seven year, over the seven year span. I've been a part of these games, and uh, you know, so every every step and every moment that I get, I find myself growing even more. All right, check out that entire conversation tonight on ABC prior to Game One. LeBron James and this lady, Rachel Nichols. We get to converse with you now. And host of the jump. I know. Yes. Exactly. It's weird because in my mind, you have boxes around you. <laughs> <laughs> and in real life, no. no and it's not how that works. <laughs> what was your biggest takeaway from that conversation with LeBron? You've had many over the years. Yeah. What's your biggest takeaway? I mean, I love that you guys picked that clip to air because for me, um, I've been actually talking to him and doing these with him since he was 16 years old, wow. his senior year in high school. And to see that evolution that he was just talking about, I mean, it would be kind of crazy to talk to one person almost every year of their life from age 16 or 17 to 32, no matter who they were, right? I right. mean, to get to see that growth. The fact that it happens to be the guy who's considered the best basketball player on the planet yeah. makes it extra interesting. And later on from, from that Q&A you guys just showed, we were talking about how his game has changed. And I said to him, I said, you know, you made this big point when you guys won the Eastern Conference Finals and you passed Jordan. He said, I did it my way. And mm-hmm. I said, why was that so important to you? He goes, look, I got so much criticism early on. And, of course, we know what he's talking about, right? Why didn't right. you take the shot? Right. Why did you pass that out? Right. Why didn't Not you clutch. do that? Yeah. Yeah. Why aren't you yeah. clutch? And he said, you know, it took a while for me to just decide, you know what, I'm not going to listen to it. And we, we went back and forth, and I said, okay, but let's be honest. You internalized that at the beginning. Don't pretend you didn't. I mm-hmm. mean, we all saw 2011. We all saw how some of that com- came to bear on him. And he said, yeah, absolutely. You have to grow up and be a man and figure out who you are. And it is very obvious when you sit and talk to him now, he is fully in control of who he is. Not just that, but pressure free I mean yeah. if there was any remaining pressure on him it was going back to Cleveland and delivering on that promise so he Absolutely. does that you can see the freedom that he's playing with now he said the other day I'm not in the proving people wrong department yes. I forgot a promotion <laughs> when I got to my 30s so it's like okay if he's chasing this ghost 
the other day, not just he did it his yeah. way, but when he talked about how he wasn't, he's not considered a scorer. Mm -hmm. You know, he's more of a facilitator, likes yeah. to make the right play, to your point about doing it his way. To me, that said that he realizes that the best way, if he's even interested in going down as the greatest, he realized that the best way to do that is to not try to be a better Michael than Michael right, or right. even a better Kareem than Kareem, but be the first and only and the best LeBron he can be. And if that means going to eight finals and four with different teams. Right. and being Someone one can the, decide they like that flavor exactly. the best. Exactly. Yeah, there it is. So, so are yeah. you seeing that from him? Just a, a freedom, a mental peace about him as opposed I, to trying to... I am in the big picture. Yeah. I completely buy in in the big picture of him not feeling that pressure. I do think once he delivered that championship to Cleveland, I mean, one of those is worth maybe three or four of other yeah. regular rings. That being said... I'm not sure I totally buy that this particular finals, there's no pressure. That's certainly what he's Even selling. This team? I would say I, I, I am buying into that, which is crazy because he's LeBron James, well, right? Well, I mean, he's selling it, and all the Cavs are selling it. I had a chat with David Griffin yesterday, and they're like, oh, this is great. I mean, everyone thinks we're going to lose, so what, what do we have to lose? Because everyone thinks we're going to lose. I understand why you say that if, they're, if you're them, but you're LeBron James. You are a team that in Cleveland has Kyrie Irving and yeah. Kevin Love and all yeah. of that firepower. You should show up in these finals and give us a competitive finals. Oh, I don't buy this whole. I don't buy the whole like, oh, there's nothing we can. We just made it here and there's but nothing we can do. It a little bit too hard. I feel but, that they're selling hard. But, I, I guess I look at it. You know, I say we'll always have New York. Yeah. They'll always have 3 1. Like, no matter yeah. what happens, it should <laughs> have less. Right? But, yeah, but the, the only reason I buy it for this particular finals is look, again, if the metrics are telling us that the Golden State Warriors are the best NBA finalist team ever, mm -hmm. then how could there be pressure on LeBron James? And I know that sounds weird to say, to look to paint the Cavs as underdogs, but it Because you feels, know he doesn't get the benefit of no, it. No, he, he doesn't. doesn't. Get the I mean, it because, look, if, let's just say, like, to, if they lose this final, no one's going to. Three gonna, and five. No one's going to say, right, three and five's coming up then. Right. Then we're right back to day one. Okay, but here's the thing. This is still the NBA finals. So I'm going to I'm gonna give you a little metaphor here, all, all right? right? Okay, us. all right. So let's say that you are going to go sing at the Super Bowl, right? You're going to do the halftime show at the Super Bowl, and it's going to be you and Mariah Carey. And everyone's like, well, I don't expect it's you to soon. have. too soon. Too soon. Right after New Year's. It's too soon. But go ahead. That's messed up. Let's try to do like an, an unquestionably good voice. Someone right. with like, right? Or I don't know. Our, whoever we were. Christina Aguilera. Right. Someone who's or Rihanna, known, who's supposed to be here today. Someone who is known. Yeah. Someone who's known for having a golden voice, yeah. right? Okay. You might say, hey, I'm singing with, you know, Christina Aguilera, right? Or I'm singing with Mariah. Who could expect me to be good? You're still singing in front of what? 80 million people, right. mm -hmm. there's still pressure. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is still the NBA Finals. I don't care if you're singing or playing next to the best team of all time. Yeah. You are playing in front of so many people on the sport's biggest stage. You better show up. It's how there's you process pressure that to pressure. Show up. How you control it. How, or let it control you. I don't care they, if you're not the best. You've got to show up. They may, not, they may not be allowing the external pressure to, to overwhelm them, but what they do have, and one thing we want to ask you about before we go, is animosity. Yes. Like, these two teams can't stand each other for different they reasons. Really LeBron not. specifically, one of the last, the two lasting images from last year's finals. Mm -hmm. The block mm -hmm. and the other block on Steph when he Wait, turned when around. He and mm -hmm. yeah, it was like, yeah. this is still my yeah. league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much animosity have you been able to glean on the part of LeBron towards Steph Curry, even still? I mean, I, I've seen the pictures of the Halloween cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know that that's there. I mean, also, you know what they did to Golden State at the Christmas Day game yep. in Cleveland, where right outside of the door of the visiting locker room suddenly appeared one of those giant posters <laughs> that yep. was the block in Iguodala. <laughs> and on the picture, they had superimposed the championship ring. Yep. I mean, come on. They are like A-level trollers no, on this they, team. No, they are super. They never cease to take the opportunity to out petty one another. It is unbelievable. And look, Steph was on Good Morning America and they asked him about, oh, what's your relationship like with LeBron James? Now, Steph doesn't give you a whole lot most times, right? He gave the most non-answer, I don't really <laughs> mess with that cat, but I'm trying not to say I don't mess with that cat type of answer. Ever. We showed a clip on our show, though, of the other uh, the other day of when LeBron came to see him play in that game, I NCAA know. tournament yeah. oh, game at yeah. Davidson, yeah. and he's clapping and oh that boy and all that stuff. And now and then mm -hmm. he's super, you know, when he's costing you championships, hard to be friendly, mm -hmm. right? Can we do this again sometime? I think a little so. jump six. Yeah, I like this. Synergy. I like this. You guys look great without the boxes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The best things in life come in threes. The Three Stooges, The Three Amigos, and now 
Cavs Warriors Part 3. The Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors in the rubber match. In every great trilogy, the first installment sets the table. LeBron's first trip to the NBA Finals on his second tour with the Cavs wasn't exactly ideal. Kevin Love was out with a shoulder injury, and Kyrie Irving was ruled out after fracturing his kneecap in Game 1. LeBron put up a hell of a fight, but these Warriors were just too overwhelming. Round 1, Golden State. The Golden State Warriors are the 2015 NBA champions. Fresh off a title, the Warriors were the toast of the NBA. They set the NBA's regular season record for wins, and Steph Curry won his second straight MVP. It's been a very fun year. Obviously, we've accomplished a lot out here competing and striving for another banner. Now, plenty of sequels never live up to the original. This one surpassed it. It's like Ali and Frazier. There's no better atmosphere than that. The Cavs rallied from a 3-1 series deficit to beat the Warriors. The city of Cleveland had its first championship in 52 years. The Warriors went from being toasted to roasted. Round two, Cleveland. Cleveland! This is for you! And so now here we are ready for the third helping of Cavs Warriors. The Warriors beefed up their squad by acquiring former MVP Kevin Durant. The Cavs, meanwhile, are hungry for another championship. So get set for Warriors-Cavs Part 3. Now, despite all this hype, people have been wondering whether or not this third installment is actually good for the NBA. Here's Jerry West, who had his thoughts. Uh, I don't like the word parody. Parody is average, and I like to see excellence. But I also like competition. I read the newspaper cover to cover every morning. And even though I don't bet, I look at the lines in Las Vegas. We were underdogs in one game this year. We were favorite in game two of the conference finals by 15 points. That is insane. It's not what anybody wants to see. At the end of the third quarter, when the Warriors led 106-75, I almost felt bad for San Antonio. But I also felt bad for our fans because if you're a real fan at a playoff game, you want to see a hard-fought hard battle back and forth. And at the end, somebody wins by a point and you go home worn out. Well, considering you got one team that enters the finals undefeated, another team that just lost once, I can kind of see what he's getting at. But this idea, and thank you, Doris Burke, for joining us and making sense of all this, but this idea that this third installment, that Warriors-Cavs 3, is somehow an indictment of how bad the rest of the NBA game, uh, NBA is, Doris, I'm just, I'm not buying it. I mean, no. have we forgotten NBA history? You got one dude with 11 championships. You have two franchises that have 30-plus titles between them. It's always been this way. So why are people just now, or why are they getting so upset? It's the road to getting here. Yeah, about, about what they're seeing. Now. Right, I think it's easy in the NBA to overreact to what you just saw. And the combined 24-1 and one, and some of the comments by GMs where you say, no matter how competitive a team I put together, I know that I'm working for second in the conference. Obviously, that's problematic. But can we please remember that everything had to fall perfectly for the Golden State Warriors to acquire Kevin Durant. Right. Right? Steph Curry. They had to have <laughs> contracts in place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had to have Oklahoma City lose in Game 7. Yep. They had to have the players say, we're not going for cap smoothing. Give us the money up front. Yep. And you hope in the long term the collective bargaining agreement has in place the things necessary to make long-term competitive balance a reality. I, I think we can't overreact to what we just saw. Obviously, yeah. we all hope for a more competitive first, second, and conference finals right. rounds. But listen, I am psyched to yeah. get going for <laughs> the trilogy. I can't wait, you guys. I really can't wait. We're looking at two of the greatest players in the forward position to ever do it. LeBron James and Kevin Durant both seem to me really comfortable with where they are both personally and professionally. So it's pretty cool. You've been very close to these teams, obviously, both these coaching staffs. Uh, Steve Kerr yeah. could coach in yeah. these finals, maybe in game one. I mean, what are you hearing? What's the latest no, with him? I'd be very surprised okay. if he coaches in game one. This is a guy who has good days and bad days. I'm yep. going to tell you this, Michael. Last, last week I was having a very private conversation with him, sitting in the uh, courtside with another reporter. And I got so uncomfortable watching his discomfort that after about two minutes I walked away. Wow. I was told yesterday was a tough day for him. I don't think it, unless Steve can string together two or three or four days where he feels good and he thinks he can string together coaching games okay. that he wants to be anything uh, of a distraction for his why, team. Why Mike. don't they just? Why don't they just say Mike Mike Brown is coaching the team? And this is not to disrespect what Steve Kerr brings. Mm. I get that his calming voice and his influence. He's been through so much with his team. Mm. But if they're not missing a beat with Mike Brown, right. 
How much, I guess what I'm asking, what's the difference, if you could quantify it for me, between Steve Kerr and Mike Brown with this collection of players where this even needs to be something that's up in the air and a possibility? Just say, hey, Mike Brown's coaching the finals. Steve Kerr, get well. We'll see you next year. Right, and I think you know the difficulty is for Steve Kerr to to miss the best part of the season. Right, you, you've worked so hard to put yourself in a position to be here. Mike Brown clearly has everything necessary to be a head coach in this league and to be a successful one. What's striking to me is there's been a couple of moments, guys, where we've seen the real difference in terms of how they strategize. Okay. Think back to the game against San Antonio where Steph gets those three fouls, and Mike leaves them in. That is something Steve Kerr, I was told by somebody close to this organization that Steve would have pulled him automatically, no questions asked. You you make sure you have him in the Was second. that an egregious error in their minds? No, like, I, guess a different team I would loved that, have, okay. that Mike had the willingness to make his own call okay. and that he's been empowered to make his own call. He should he should have that kind of equity. Right. He's earned that kind but of they equity. But they weren't saying, oh, Steve would have never done that. Shame on in Mike. A bad way. No, they, okay, they weren't saying a bad, a bad way. Gotcha. Just in a, in a, hey, this is a, that was a, that was a smart move. Yep. It ended up making that run that separated the game. The other thing is, think about the third quarter that Kevin Durant had in that same game where they went exclusively pick and roll. Again, ISO heavy Mike Brown, Steve Kerr more opportunistic in terms of equal opportunity. Mike Brown's got to make calls. Right. For he's the course be of the his game. Own coach. That's yeah. right. He's got to be his own coach. And we, he's been willing to do it. We've discussed throughout the show, like, Pressure on Durant. The, 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 the obvious, the low-hanging fruit. Pressure sure. on Durant. Pressure on LeBron. Sure. Pressure on Curry. Tonight, game one. Mm. And, and really beyond this series, what's the play, who's the player you're most intrigued to watch? Who are you locked in on? Kevin Love. This is a guy who averaged eight points on like 36% shooting. Really was ineffective in the early parts of the series last year because you think about the way uh, the Cleveland team defends and also how spread the floor is with Golden State. So now you're getting Kevin Love involved in a number of switches. You're testing his feet laterally. And it was a problem for him. But he seems and is in as good a place as he's ever been confidence-wise. He certainly earned the trust and equity of the guys beside him. There's a real unity between he and Kyrie Irving, which is compelling to watch. And I wonder how much of that is both have had to figure out how to play beside LeBron. And Kyrie, in a private conversation with us, said, Always in the NBA, somebody is going to take the blame. Pointing fingers always happens. Mm. And for Kevin and I, we've had to learn to sort of endure that. And both guys have come through it. It doesn't make his challenge any less difficult mm. guarding that's Golden LeBron, State Warriors. That's LeBron giving him that blueprint yeah. that Kyrie was talking about. <laughs> Kyrie's talking Not to talking Kobe. Jay-Z, right? yeah, about, yeah, exactly, <laughs> about no Shaq. Kobe thing going right. on, so a lot of good synergy here, a lot of great synergy with you How and the nice broadcast to be with team. You I know, first yeah, exactly. It's a pleasure, great to see you guys. Always. Great to have We'll great talk to, to you great later. Yeah, you guys. Thanks. Draymond Green's defense. He's so shameless. I'm not shameless. Does he? Does he not play great defense? Yes, he does. Okay. And the Warriors' for very first game in the playoffs back on April 16th, Green came up with this huge block. <laughs> that block helped set the tone for a suffocating Warriors defensive effort that ranked first in the NBA in the playoffs. That numero uno he certainly walks the walk. But we all know that Draymond Green, he could talk as good as he can play defense. Never this one you got. Up. This one you got too much power. <laughs> you got too much power. Is Draymond Green not a relevant part of this story? Draymond Green, military moment, and you bring head coach for your Michigan State Spartans who, and your friend. Who better of course, to of give course. us insight yeah, right, right. into. I just happened to be. Got it. <laughs> Dray, who better to give us insight into Draymond Green than this man here, other than his mother, Mary Green? I, I, I she'll think give it to you, too. <laughs> she will give it to you, too. I think you probably know him the best, right? So, Tom, thanks a lot for joining us. Appreciate you joining yeah, us. Yeah, we coach. do. Thanks for having and, me. And speaking of Draymond. <laughs> clean, player. I know. That's clean. Got that beanie jacket on. I see you, Draymond. Uh-huh. <laughs> Did you teach him how to dress like no, that? No, he didn't wear that back he in didn't college. Wear that back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> looking, little, like little going, looking like you're about to be on the off Broadway <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> A little more expensive threads there. <laughs> now, obviously, for the Warriors, um, not having Steve Kerr as like a consistent presence has, you know, I'm sure had some kind of impact. A lot of people have said it's had the most impact on Draymond Green. Now, you still talk to him. What have you tried to kind of tell him, or, or how you've tried to fill in as he's been kind of missing that Steve Kerr influence? Well, first of all, I think Mike Brown has done a great job, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to be honest with you. And, and, you know, Mike's been through this before, and he's been through it with superstars. I think Bob Meyer has helped, you know, to, as the GM. And, you know, I think they all take a little role in that. But but Steve has done an incredible job. You know, he called me right when he got the job and, 
and just, you know, I probably like he did with each player and wanted to know, you know, the idiosyncrasies. Now, what, what did you tell I, him? Be I, honest, Tom. What did you tell him? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, we love Draymond, and, you know, it just, uh, he is a guy that, uh, you know, plays with a lot of passion, as you see in the highlights. And uh, sometimes does it get out of whack a little bit? You think so, but. Uh, I'm not sure they'd trade him for the world. I know I would. I, I, I'm always looking for another Draymond. If I could find one, I'd be a, a better team. So game four is one of those times. Obviously suspended for game five. How much have you talked to him, and how much does he carry being suspended last year for a game and leading to the Cavaliers' comeback in part? How much does he carry that and want to atone for that in these finals? Well, I mean, I think it bothered him. I bothered him a lot. I remember talking to him when he was right next door uh, watching that baseball game, you know, and... Uh, which I thought was incredible that Bob Meyer was with him during that time. But, uh, you know, I think the true colors of Draymond came in the final game then. He might have played. I, th I think if they would have won, he would have been the MVP of the oh, series. Oh, yeah, triple-double, right, yeah. And uh, he's kind of a triple-double machine in a way, but he's the only guy that I know, not the only one, but when you get a triple-double and you don't score 10 points like he's done before with blocks and assists and rebounds, uh, he's a unique player yeah. in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, now how much has he or how much have you talked to him, rather, about kind of keeping his cool during this finals, especially against this particular team? Well, I, I think it is important, you know. You, what you don't want to do is change who he is, but just curb it a little bit, you know. I mean, uh, and I'm sure there's going to be some antagonizing both ways. Everybody knows what buttons to push, but um, Draymond has matured a lot like we all do. You too. Oh, since I, I know I have. You. Michael, since I, I remember her back in college, Man, she's matured I, I, too. I couldn't imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> but he has matured, and I think he'll uh, he'll play basketball. Well, you know, and Draymond's the flashpoint. That incident right there, you know, people think of it as a turning point, but it wasn't all Draymond in terms of why. It obviously, credit Cleveland, namely LeBron and Kyrie Irving, for the comeback, but it was also like Harrison Barnes was self-checked. Yeah. You know, you had you know, a lot of guys in the step. I mean, here the Warriors come flash, flop, uh, swap it out, excuse me. Harrison Barnes for just Kevin Durant. So I'm saying all that to say, as a coach, what matchup intrigues you the most? Because LeBron may end up having to guard Kevin Durant a lot as well as carry a load offensively. What matchup uh, are you looking at tonight? Well, I think he forward? is. I think Klay Thompson has to play better than he's been playing, you know, because he's a, you know, I've, I've seen him have some incredible games. And I think some of the stars are going to X themselves out a little bit. And, uh, Come down to that bench is going to be very important. And yeah. who plays well? Does Ingadala come out and play well? Who does guard LeBron? I think they'll rotate guys on him, but I don't know that. I didn't ask Draymond for any of the game plan, but I think uh, a lot of guys are going to have to play well. But I think the bench is going to be important. Yeah. All right, Coach. Well, yep. We appreciate you Thank joining you for us. Thank you dropping by. And, and look, look into the camera right now and tell everybody we're winning the national championship next year. Don't, don't. <laughs> we're going to try to win the national championship. We'll take you off the hook. <laughs> F-I-N-A-L-L-Y. Finally. Finals are here. So before we call it a day, let's say you had a good day. It's a good day because the finals are actually here. Let's finish this show up by talking about the guy that finished the finals, Kyrie Irving. Cover boy for 2K18. Yeah. Okay. Been on a roll. Dark Horse Finals MVP. But I'm going to go with... Kevin Durant, Warriors in five. I know MVP. you'll call me a homer, but I'm going with Draymond Green as the finals MVP. Warriors in? Warriors in six. We got the Warriors. They got LeBron. And I we finally got the trilogy. Let's get it on. We'll talk to you all tomorrow.